Hey, welcome to Ucanny. Today we're going to talk about how to do a power balance test on any vehicle. Basically, power balance is, is a test that's used to determine which cylinder is underperforming. So if you've got a car, for example, it's a four cylinder, let's say you could do it at, on any car, four, six, eight, 10, 12 cylinders. But if you got, let's say a four cylinder, each one of the cylinders, each one of the four cylinders is supposed to um, contribute power. So in that case would be 25 percent of power should come from each cylinder but if you got a cylinder that's underperforming that uh, means it's not putting out as much power to the crankshaft as the rest of the cylinders you're gonna have issues you're gonna have that that engine when it idles it, it's not gonna the engine is itself is not gonna be balanced it's part of the reason why it's called power balance test because the crankshaft won't uh, have enough power for from one cylinder and it show it throws that whole uh, balance of the engine off and then when you park or when you are at idle you might you might hear you might feel the car vibrating in a strange way that's not normal now power balance tests can sometimes be also used to determine if um, there is a cylinder that's really misfiring but the engine control unit is not picking it up now most of the time the majority of the time an engine control unit should pick up a misfire but we've seen cases when uh, we have a misfire and the ECU or the PCM on that particular make and model is not picking up at all. So you're gonna do a power balance test. We're gonna show you how to use the Ucanic scanner. Now, uh, a lot of, for, for Fords, for example, the power balance, balance test is kind of pre-programmed on their ECUs. Uh, you can go to power balance and then you can select the Ford and then the make and model. But honestly, a balance test can be performed even with no tools at all you want to disable one cylinder at a time and you're looking at how much drop on rpms do you have uh, at idle so first um, you're going to warm up the engine to normal operating temperature and then you want to go and disable cylinder one uh, so there's two ways to disable it a lot of people just unplug the uh, coil and that disables that cylinder and then you should see rpms drop so let's say if normal rpms are 800 typically they're going to drop about 150 uh, below that so you should the engine should um, kind of start to fluctuate a little bit at, at 650 right so there's a, the other way to do it is you disable one of the injectors and that is the better way to do it and we're going to do it with a scanner where we go and disable each one of the injectors one at a time and then we're monitoring rpms the reason why you want to disable an injector instead of a coil is because when you uh, disable a coil the injector is still working it's still sending fuel to that cylinder and that raw fuel is then going to the catalytic converter and then it's uh, gets ignited there and, and when you have such a fire in there and high temperature at the catalytic converter you might uh, cause damage to it so ideally you want to disable the fuel injector instead of the ignition coil and we're going to do that with the scanner so to do a, a power balance test if you have a four the easiest thing would be to go here and do power balance but if you don't have a forward what you want to do is you want to go back to diagnostics and then you select your make and model or you can go to obd2 here and that connects to the engine control unit but the other option is to select vin automatic read if reading the vin fails then you should try the obd2 uh, from the menu but in this case you read the vid so let's take a look what we need to do now the car has a lot of control modules and they're just in categories here but what we're interested in is we want to go to drive and then you go to motor electronics now sometimes this might be called something different engine control unit powertrain control module every manufacturer calls it a little bit different but you get the idea we're connecting to the engine control unit and under active tests you want to go here where it says fuel injectors this is where we can do some of the uh, bidirectional test that means that we can turn a lot of these things on and off and you can you know change mixture adaptation and things of that nature fuel pump you can turn that on and off but go to option to fuel injectors and then um, before we proceed to the next step you, want, you do want to make sure that you're performing this test uh, once the engine reaches that normal operating temperature and then uh, engine should be running you need to drive it just let the car idle so here is where we select each injector and we're going to turn them on and off one at a time so 
right here engine speed you see the rpms the best thing to do is to get a piece of paper and write this down so say uh, cylinder one you know this is um, idle rpm but once we turn off cylinder one injector the rpm should drop and we should notice a difference on how the engine is um, doing so let's go ahead we press four and now the engine is shaking and the rpm is dropping now the engine is trying to correct that of course and it brings the rpm but you can see how that hit six uh, 650 or so so you write that down and then turn this back on by pressing three and then give it about 10 seconds let the engine stabilize go back and then you're going to go to cylinder two of course you know that's the idle rpm and then what we do is we turn this off and then we notice the engine is shaking so now you, you compare, compare the impact of the cylinder one with cylinder two and also the rpm drops that you're seeing here i exit that without turning that injector back on so let's fix that we press three and then we see the engine stabilizes and it's back to normal so those two the impact of uh, in cylinder one and cylinder two when we turn them off they both have the same impact now when you come back when you go to that cylinder that is underperforming when you turn that off you're going to see you might see no impact at all uh, if that cylinder is not working at all but you might see very little impact that meaning that that cylinder is not contributing to the engine output as much as these other ones that when you turn them off they're basically the ones that do all the hard work when you turn them off the engine like it really goes off balance when you turn off the one that is not contributing enough power because it has an issue it could have low compression it could have maybe not enough fuel not good spark and things of that nature uh, when you turn that one off you're going to notice that the uh, the rpms are not going to drop quite that much the engine impact the shaking is not going to be as significant as it was with the other cylinders that were healthy so you can turn that off and then turn back on let that stabilize and keep going through all the cylinders until you're going to find that uh, cylinder that it really does make very little difference and once you find that then you have to uh, dive a little deeper you probably would start with doing a compression test on that cylinder you should um, make sure that you have good spark plugs on there, um, there, there you want to check if you have a whole side of the engine that's misfiring then you might be looking at the mass airflow sensors if you got two different ones uh, for each uh, side of the engine or you also might want to look at the oxygen sensor um, values which you can actually look right under live data here you can look at um, oxygen sensors uh, values because the uh, the upstream so it would be bank one sensor one and bank two sensor one the upstream o2 sensor values are sometimes called lambda uh, sensors but those uh, the value from those is used to adjust the mixture of the fuel and air and what's going on that so if you have a whole side that's that's running rough um, then you might look at a little bit more further than just that that cylinder itself you might be looking at uh, mass airflow sensors you might be looking at uh, maybe fuel pressure on that side of the rail you might be looking at uh, bad o2 sensors the upstreams especially you might be looking at uh, maybe a clogged catalytic converter uh, but in, in that case you probably have codes in here uh, you'll have other codes in here if you read fault codes uh, you, you you should technically have other codes that kind of point to that issue um, and then what you another thing you could do is uh, you can run a quick scan and kind of look at the whole picture of all the car and see what other codes are so uh, basically when you're trying to find an issue like that power balance engine not running properly uh, computers on these newer cars are very good at picking up what's going on but not always so you might have to do some more manual work trying to figure out what is causing the issue but doing a power balance test it really can help you narrow it down to what cylinder is actually um, not performing or contributing as much as the rest of the cylinders on that engine to the overall output of the engine and then just finding out which cylinder is um, is the issue 
or it's not contributing enough it's just the beginning so we had we had for example we had a, a engine that had coils but each for each cylinder it was a v6 had the coil for a cylinder but that coil uh went fed two spark plugs that that, that car had two spark plugs per cylinder so what we had is we had a car that at idle it was did not have any check engine lights on but at idle you can feel that engine all running smooth and 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 feel like little hiccups so what we did in that case we went we used a scanner to disable one each one of the each one of the cylinders once at a time so as you disable one ignition coil when you find the one that is not it has an issue you're going to notice that the rpms are not going to drop as much you might have for example you might have a valve that's not closing properly you might have things like you have an injector if you got a direct injector so fine-tuned that even a little bit of a clog on this injector is going to cause performer issue and the injector might not throw a code because it's firing it's still sending fuel but it's just not sending enough fuel so uh, you might have injector issues you might have a bad head gasket that's only affecting one cylinder so maybe worn um, piston rings things of that nature but they're just the beginning so at least you want to uh, identify which uh, which piston is not contributing enough power to the overall output of the